Hello and welcome to a seminar video with Sendian. My name is Sebastian, a marketing associate with Sendian, and today we'll be covering transparent data encryption with Israel Dennis and David Outwert. And I'll let them take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Israel Dennis. I'm the managing director for Sendian. In today's webinar, we're going to cover about uh, talk about transparent data encryption. Um, we have Dave Outward. He's our senior Oracle DBA consultant and he's going to run the presentation. Um, the way the presentation will work is we'll do a 30 to 45 minute presentation and then we'll open it up for questions at the end. Again, my name is Israel Dennis. On the call we have Dave Outward. We're going to be covering transparent data encryption on Oracle. Dave, it's all yours. Say hi. Sounds good. Hi, everyone, or good afternoon, or whatever time you're watching it. Um, this is me. I'm, a, I'm an old time guy. I've been working with Oracle for 30 plus years. Um, got an email and a phone number. Kind of a disclaimer it's just gen general outline. It's informational purposes only. The statements and are provided as is without any kind of warranty, um, either it's expressed or implied. Um, so take take it for what it's worth. This, like I said, I'm I'm an old guy and been around doing this kind of stuff for years. Um, contact Cindy and if you have any kind of projects, especially database work. Um, we've got tons of experience and we'd love to work with you and your company on any database project or any project that you may have. Mm -hmm. So Israel, talk about yeah. Cindy. Yeah, correct. So a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, Sendian started out as a consulting company, but now we offer uh, a slew of, of things. We offer managed services as well as consulting. We focus primarily on the Infor application, but we're Infor and Oracle certified partner. Um, we have about 20, 25 consultants. We're based out of Dallas, started in 1999, and we're growing. Um, so the agenda for today is to cover uh, the transpar transparent data encryption. We applied this in uh, uh, on all our applications for both for Infor and also for Oracle. And David is going to talk a little bit about how it, that is done and how it works. So what I'm going to cover is basically give you a little ba uh, background on transparent data encryption or TDE, what kind of benefits you'll get from using TDE, who can configure it, how the column encryption works, how table space encryption works. Something new with um, this version is Keystone um, Framework, some examples, and then I'll open it up for some questions. Kind of what Israel just went over a second ago, 15, 20 consultants, sending in good people, good company. Mm -hmm. Transparent data encryption. Um, it's been around in Oracle since version 10, I believe, and it really was kind of kludgy. I mean, mo most things brand new in Oracle are um, great in concept, but the initial rollouts are kind of kind of funky. But with the latest version 12, 201, uh, they've come up with TD, the transparent data encryption. And this enables um, you to encrypt uh, sensitive data and data that you store in tables and table spaces. After the data is encrypted, this data transparently is uh, decrypted for authorized users of applications when they access this data. TDE helps protect data stored on disk or any kind of media in the event that the storage or media disk uh, file is stolen. Sorry, or stolen. Um, Oracle uses authentication authorizations and auditing mechanisms to secure that the data in the database, but not in the operating system files where the data is stored. To protect these data files, Oracle Database provides TDE uh, that encrypts sensitive data and data stored in data files. To prevent unauthorized decryption, uh, TDE stores the encryption keys in a security module external to the database called the Keystone. You can mm -hmm. configure the key vault um, as part of the TDE implementation, and it enables you to centrally manage the keystones. Mm -hmm. And we the, the the one key benefit about having TDE is that uh, we've seen a lot of hacks happen for companies like Walmart and and these companies had to use TDE and some of the data encryption. Some of these things could have been uh, avoided. So it's just another layer to encrypt the data so that if you have any issues, uh, th this helps in avoiding those. 
is really you just stole my next part. I was just going to list some some companies that in the last year, year and a half, been hacked. Arby, Dun and Bradstreet, Saks, University of North Carolina Healthcare, Chipotle, Brooks Brothers, Kmart, Verizon, Equifax, Whole Food Markets, and Hyatt Hotels. Not saying all of those were our Oracle companies, but um, they were hacked. And with um, something like TDE, if they were Oracle, um, they might have been hacked, but nobody was going to be getting the data out of the databases. So some of the benefits of TDE, um, basically sensitive data is encrypted. Um, I know a lot of company security groups are um, go hyper um, about security-related regulatory issues. I've worked at places before that uses auxiliary objects inside of a database to encrypt data. Uh, users and applications don't have a clue that the database uh, or anything in the database is encrypted. Um, the nice part with the 12201 version is you can encrypt the um, data with no time needed, or no downtime needed, I'm sorry. And you don't need to make any kind of application modifi uh, modifications. And Oracle automates the TDE encryption keys and keystone management operations. Now, who can configure the TDE um, key? You must be granted administrator key management system privileges to configure TDE. Um, if you must open the key store at the mount stage, then you must be granted the SYSKM administrator privilege, which includes administrator key management system privilege and other necessary privileges. And um, anybody who is going to administer the key management must be able to create any table, alter any table, and create table space. How does it work for a column? Um, the little little screenshot right there, you've got um, social security numbers, credit card information. In medical centers, you've got medical record numbers, you've got the social security numbers. And basically what you'll do is just encrypt the column, the credit card number. You'll use a key, which is off on the left-hand side. Uh, we'll get into where you have to um, take care of that key in just a moment. But it basically will encrypt the, the critical confidential records. Um, big for company or for things like hospitals, big for um, retail, big for hotels, big for anything. Um, I mean, I, I've worked at a company that's in the aircraft maintenance where they sell fuel, and it's big for that, storing credit card numbers. Um, and how many of you have had credit card information hacked and, and stolen? Uh, and TDE would, um, would definitely protect you. How does the ta uh, TDE table space encryption works? Everything inside of a ta table space are automatically encrypted. You don't need to analyze any table columns to see if you need to do it. So if you've got 100 tables inside of a table space, every one of them is going to be encrypted. If you got a thousand, a thousand are going to be encrypted, um, but and you don't have to really go down and analyze. You know, column A, I'm storing this. Column B, I'm storing that. Do I need to, to encrypt those? In inside the table space, automatically everything gets encrypted. The key store, uh, key store framework, it, it basically allows the um, separation of um, duties. Uh, a lot of places have a security group. Um, could be handled by there. Um, a lot of places, the DBAs handle the um, building the key store. Uh, it facilitates compliance. Um, uh, most places have these strong um, security groups, and they will basically stand over you and stomp their feet and tell you you have to comply with everything. Um, to, to enforce the key store backup requirements, um, you can, you'll be able to back it up and store it in a different location. It can be um, stored in Oracle's ASM, and you can reverse migrate the key store. Here are some examples. The creating, creation of the wallet, you'll make an entry inside your SQLnet.org file, and below is just an example of what you've got to do. Encryption, wallet, location, source, file, the method, and then you put a directory where the wallet will um, be located. Um, you want to connect the container database and create the key store. There's the SQL example below, administer, 
key management creates the key store. You've got a, a path to go to identified by password, and then you'll see the key store altered. Then you open it up, administer key management, set keystone open by identified by password container equal all. Again, you get the key store altered. Um, administer key management set key identified by password with backup container equals all. It's altered. You switch over to your your pluggable database. Alter sessions. You're going to select your encryption key. Um, from the you know, V-Dollar encryption keys table, or view, sorry, um, you, there it is down below. Mm -hmm. And and if you need some help with setting these up, these things up, we can more than we're more than happy to help you set these things up. This is what we do. The whole goal of the presentation is to help uh, help you understand a little bit about how it works and how we can help you set these things up. Um, we're actually winding down. The, um, here's just an example of some um, data files from a, um, the V-Dollar data, um, data file. You've got um, six, six data files, and all of the data uh, resides inside the uh, – Sendian resides in the SOE table space, and there's the SOE uh, second, from the, or second from the bottom. All permanent is all online. So we want to encrypt the SOE table space. So you're going to alter the table space SOE encryption using the AES-192 encryption type. Um, you're going to encrypt the files that we just had, you know, and um, you'll come back with the table space altered. It'll take some time depending on how many you've got, but it definitely will take care of it. And that's basically it in a nutshell. If you got any questions, this is the perfect time to ask them. Mm -hmm. And again, like I uh, mentioned earlier, you know, our goal is to help you get these things set up. Um, Dave has been doing this for a number of years with a number of clients, and um, we have experience on doing this on multiple versions of Oracle. Um, we can we can do it in your dev environment and then schedule it to do to be done on on um, your other environments like Prod, and help uh, mitigate any issues that you may encounter as a result of this. It, it shouldn't require any downtime, correct, Dave? That's great. Doesn't need to. Yeah. You, but, you can do it online. You'll have there will be some impact. Um, I've I've seen it up to 50% um, impact. Um, but at the same time, everything's still accessible and it's still usable online. Um, mm -hmm. And the alternative is, is schedule it during a maintenance window. Right. And we, that's what we recommend is that we schedule this during a maintenance window. What is the impact on performance on the database? Is there any impact on database performance? The old versions, like I said earlier, it was really kind of, kind of funky. And it, was, it was a heavy impact. With the 12201, I haven't seen um, an impact at all. It, it really, it really is what its name. It's pretty transparent. You just you don't know it. Um, at the worst, probably maybe a five percent increase, but I haven't seen that. I've read five percent. Mm -hmm. How does it does the data encryption show up on the logs or any of that stuff? How does this translate to uh, actual data on logs and things like this? Um, it basically will be encrypted with all the the logs that Oracle does. There's okay. no there's no way you're going to be able to hack into this data and you know steal a social security number or a credit card number or anything that needs to be. The data you know it gets decrypted based off the key store and it'll get encrypted based off the key store. If a, if a client was to copy, let's say, because one of the, one of the things that we do often, and this is for more for people to understand, is if you have a product line copy where we copy the database, say from prod back to test, do we have to copy the key store from prod to test? How does that work? Can you explain? Can you talk a little bit about that? You'll have to have a key store for for the test or dev environments or wherever you're copying it um, to. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just, you'll go back into your SQLnet.org file, um, add the location of where you want the wallet, and then you'll be in business. And it really okay. is pretty simple. Okay.
Good, good, good. So it, it it's minimal impact to product line copies, database copies, correct? Correct. Well, that covers it. Thanks for watching the video, and if you have any questions, comments, or maybe suggestions for future videos, be sure to leave us a line at the email address below. My name's Sebastian, wishing you a great rest of your day.